Hi everyone, Quivine here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are looking into January. We're looking into the month proper, looking ahead to the month to see what is going to come up. So of course, now that we've moved a little further into, well, now that we've moved into 2025 by more than a couple of hours, the moon is after moving past new. It's after coming into its next cycle. You know, it's a few days old here instead of being zero. Uh, the moon cycle is measured usually from being new, so the moon is 29 and a half, 20 odd, uh, just before it moves in front of the sun. But we can see here the moon, roughly in between Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, it's just about half, I think it's a little less than half. Yeah, 47% instead of 50%. It goes up to 58%, so we may not get to see perfect half here in Ireland, uh, just as we don't always get to see a perfect 100% full moon from any given location on the Earth. But here we go. Venus is closer to its greatest elongation because we're a little bit later in January. Mars is coming a little bit closer to its opposition in the sky. So just like Jupiter, when Mars is at opposition, when anything's at opposition, it rises as the sun sets, sets as the sun rises. That means the moon and Mars, when the moon is full and Mars is close to opposition, they're going to be very close together as well. So we'll take a look at that. But we're able to see Mars and Venus in the sky that bit earlier. I think it was 7 o'clock on New Year's Eve, and now that we're just a week into New Year's, it's like quarter to six. So it's significantly easier. You can do this significantly earlier. And here we are, just coming up to 7 o'clock. It's still nice and dark at 7 o'clock, and they're nice and clearly visible in the sky. Of course, that light of the sort of half moon will go as we come up to morning time. Mercury's motion around the sun is, of course, much, much quicker than Venus's. So we can see there it's already, you know, just a week after you may have seen it quite easily on New Year's Day morning, just a week later. And you've got it looks like only about 10, 15 minutes to catch it at all. And a comet, I believe. No, nope. maybe if we zoom in and take a closer look. Uh, there is a comet going around the sun early in January, but as I mentioned in a previous video, it is better seen from the southern hemisphere, so it's going to be very difficult for us to get here. Now that we're in the middle of January, Mercury's gone. It's gone from the morning sky, but of course, Mercury will be back in the evening. Uh, we're starting to see Scorpius nice and clearly in the morning while the sky is still reasonably dark. Uh, you could see Scorpius as the sun rose on Christmas morning and the morning of New Year's Day. There's uh, the moon and Mars just incredibly close together. I wanted to check if there was an occultation and it... You know, it looks like it, but I have to zoom in to double check. Oh, not quite. Not from Ireland, anyway. Potentially from another location on Earth, we would get an occultation here. But honestly, this may be even better in terms of photography, just because Mars and the Moon look so incredibly close together there. Uh, let's try taking a closer look at Mars while it's this close to the Moon. I'm not able to get that much detail. Of course, the moon is so much closer to us than Mars, but Mars is looking great. We can see both of the ice caps there. We're almost looking straight down on Mars's equator. Valles Marineris there, the largest uh, canyon in the solar system. Coming back just a few days, and there is the Tharsis region with Olympus Mons, the largest volcano. So, of course, Mars, fantastically interesting. It's there illuminated 99.9, .9, going back down, so we passed the opposition. I'm only seeing it at 99.9% .9 illuminated, not 100%. That's a little bit annoying, but um, these things happen occasionally. Uh, like I said, we don't always get to see things 100% from here in Ireland, so potentially Mars is 100% when it's visible over a different part of the planet. But there we go. Looking at it like this, it looks like an occultation of Mars by the moon, but not from here in Ireland. Uh, when we are a little bit closer to the middle of January, I may travel closer to the equator i think closer to the equator might do it and that might cause it to actually line up as an occultation as i have mentioned in previous videos as well we don't always get to see every occultation uh because occultations happen about as quickly as eclipses uh given that it depends primarily on the motion of the moon around the earth uh as well as a little bit on our rotation we're well mostly on the movement of the moon uh, because they're so quick 
you don't always get to see them from every location on Earth. So here's Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. We can see how close together Venus and Saturn are there. They slide right past each other as Saturn continues around the Sun while Venus pushes out to the side of the Sun. Here we are at the end of January, and it doesn't look like we're seeing Mercury in the evening from here in Ireland. But I did want to take a look for that comet. No, Mercury is still on the wrong side. And when Mercury comes around to there in early February, ooh, that looks like it's not going to be visible from here in Ireland either. Maybe from closer to the equator? Yeah, maybe from closer to the equator. Maybe from the countryside. Uh, but there's Mercury. Next to it will be Saturn, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, uh, Uranus, Neptune. Neptune. All of the planets. Uh, all of the planets that are visible to the naked eye will be visible at the same time in the near future if you are in a favorable enough location. But as I'm sure you can see there, Saturn and Mercury will be quite difficult. Venus, easy. Jupiter, easy. Mars, of course, easy. And Mars being with us for the entire night over the course of January, that's going to give us plenty of opportunities to observe Mars in detail and nice and closely. Unfortunately, it looks like... Um, very close to the night of opposition is going to be around the full moon but if we go a little bit earlier because i think mars does reach its opposition a little bit earlier in the month let's see when it gets to oh um let's see when it gets to directly above the south at directly midnight that's a good way to check if something is at opposition so we're too early there uh we've gone all the way into february so that makes sense come a little bit later That is pretty close. Uh, I won't fiddle around with it for the sake of just a few minutes. That is pretty close. Uh, so there we are, late in January. There's Mars directly above the south. That's about as high as it's going to get. It would be a little bit better if Mars hit its opposition closer to midwinter because it would be even higher in the sky thanks to the angle of the ecliptic. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And Mercury definitely gone from the morning sky even once we're through to the 20th. I'll bring us back a few days, a little bit closer to the beginning of January, because I am only giving sort of a cliff's notes, cliff notes. I don't know if they're cliff notes or cliff's notes, uh, because I've never actually used them. I've only heard about them on TV, uh, but I do roughly know that they're a you know, short explanation of something. Uh, we do have a couple of meteor showers coming up in January, moving a little bit later here. There are the Gamma Ursae Minorids and the Quadrantids. And I think it's the Quadrantids, yeah. Variable, we're seeing there 60 to 200, peaking on the 3rd of January. So early, uh, this is coming up. Potentially the date this video was posted, I'd have to double check. There we're getting a Zenith hourly rate of 21 to 69. It's going down, we may have to come back early morning of January 3rd. Let's see if we're getting a higher rate. No, we are not. Um, but the Quadrantids, they have the potential to be a pretty good meteor shower. So we do have them coming up in early January, especially if you're under a dark sky. Yeah, we were hitting 70 there. Yeah, that's pretty good. 70 meteors an hour, uh, Zenith hourly rate of 70, that'd be fantastic. Uh, the local hourly rate there is down at 414 because, uh, well, we're in the countryside. We're not getting as many as we potentially could but they will be added on to the background 10 coming from the anti-helium. So the Quadrantids, at least, they're coming up. They should be pretty good. We've got Mars coming to opposition, Venus coming to its greatest eastern elongation. And of course, it is a new year. Uh, so we have various exciting things coming up in 2025 as a whole. Uh, there's Mercury in the morning, still nice and early in January. So there are going to be a few more opportunities to catch Mercury in the morning if you didn't manage to catch Mercury uh, on New Year's morning or on Christmas morning. With all of the other planets, they're going to continue to get easier and easier to see at sunset in the evening, pretty much until we get into February. So January is going to continue to be a great time to see the planets all the way. Well, you know, January will be a great time to see the planets and February will be a great time to see the planets. Uh, there's the moon and Saturn nice and close together. So with so many planets in the sky, there's even more opportunities for occultation. And there we go. We've got one from here in Ireland. So it looks like on the 4th of January, uh, just about six o'clock. Saturn will be behind the moon. Now, the occultation of Saturn, the occultation of Saturn is often an impressive one. We've got Saturn uh, coming in from the illuminated limb of the moon here, which isn't as cool. 
Um, in my personal opinion, of course, cool is subjective, but I think watching Saturn disappear into what seems to be nothing because it's the nighttime portion of the moon, it's the dark limb of the moon that we can't see, watching Saturn essentially blink out of existence like that, I think is just a little bit cooler. But seeing Saturn here essentially set behind the moon, and we can see there earlier with Mars, it was tough to see any details on Mars while we were also looking at the moon, but here we can see the Sea of Tranquility, it took me a second, but the Sea of Tranquility and the rings of Saturn at the same time which is really cool and of course there's a uh, titan as well so here this um if I'll, I'll play it in reverse to give you an idea of the version that i uh, sort of prefer but there's we're coming up to morning time if it happened like this saturn would appear to disappear um into empty space like this so the reverse i think is a little bit cooler but an occultation is cool no matter which way it goes. So we've got that occultation there. Very quickly, I don't think we'll get an occultation of Jupiter. I think it's too high. Yeah, the moon is too high off of the ecliptic. Or Jupiter is too low underneath it. Of course, there's, there's uh, variation in both cases there. But occultation of Saturn, that's nice to know. That's something we can look forward to. Uh, also quite close to the beginning of January. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look ahead into January. I do apologize that I didn't get it posted before January actually began. But with Christmas and New Year's at the end of December, there were some interesting dates to focus on. Hopefully I will get my preview of February up before February begins. If you did enjoy this video, please do like it. If you'd like to see more content from me in 2025, then please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also check out my website, creepingscontent.ie, where you can read some of this information. And hopefully I'll see you back here next time.